this is our big outreach event every year and it is to showcase all of our study abroad and overseas program opportunities for undergraduates at the University of Rochester. And so today we have all of our study abroad programs represented either by returned students, some of our exchange students, uh, program representatives, and in some cases even faculty who lead those programs or have great familiarity with them. Australia is very popular, the UK is very popular, but we also have programs in Peru, um, in um, Ecuador. We have several different programs around Europe, Paris, Milan, Madrid, Barcelona. Um, there are a lot of choices for our students in terms of location. Approximately 25 to 30 percent of our undergraduate population studies abroad either for a semester, a summer, or an academic year. Uh, part of my job is to help us meet our goal of having 25 percent of our engineers go abroad. So I'm here to help promote that and tell them that it's possible to go abroad as an engineer. Well, I went to Australia because there were chemi classes approved abroad. So I was able to take uh, heat and mass and thermo, which were needed for my fall of junior year abroad. So I didn't fall behind and that was good. Well, the tough thing about engineering students is that the curriculum is so prescribed, you know, and there's this perception that, oh my God, I'm an engineer. I can't find the courses I need in English, in a foreign country. And, uh, but we're trying to dispel that, you know, engineers can, should, and do go abroad. We talked to our uh, undergrad advisor and he told us a few places that actually offer optics, like Australia and um, some parts of Europe, so like that's where I really want to go and study. There's such an expanse of different kinds of study abroad programs that you can, even from those, get like very specific opportunities. So there are internships that you can do. I did an exchange program, so I was directly enrolled into um, a British university. Sometimes you're going abroad with people from University of Rochester, so you get to share those experiences with, you know, your friends on campus. Um, but I think, in any sense, you know, broadening your worldview is very important. I've always wanted to study abroad, and I've never left the country. And Rochester has fantastic opportunities for that. Um, I've been studying Japanese for a couple years now, so I'm hoping to be able to get into a Japanese program. I'm looking at India primarily, but I'm open to anything. I went abroad in Brighton, England. Uh, I did an exchange program at University of Sussex. Um, well, we're here um, advertising the University of Sussex, where we're both from. Um, so yeah, just talking to students um, who are interested in maybe studying abroad there. I'm here because I'm representing College Year in Athens. Um, it's a program based in Athens, Greece. Um, I am here for the Smith Island Archaeology Project in Bermuda this summer. Um, this program, you go to France and you study deaf French culture and French sign language, which is really important to anyone that's studied American Sign Language because American Sign Language is originally derived from French Sign Language. Fall semester in Tuscany, Italy, you're going to be traveling the entire country. It's going to fulfill your entire humanities cluster. I have been doing this job for a year and a half and I have never heard a student come back and say I should not have done that. Don't let anything um, prevent you from going. I didn't know French when I went to France and it was completely fine. Go with an open mind and you'll be blown away. It was the best decision of my undergraduate like career thus far. It really was. It was amazing. <laughs> I don't really know how else to say it. Um, yeah. A production of the University of Rochester. Please visit us online and subscribe to our channel for more videos.